was traveling with his friends to a north place called Caesarea Philippi. He asked the question, who do people say that I am? We just heard that in the Gospel text. And several of the disciples jumped to the occasion and answered what they, what they heard from various people who had listened to Jesus. They said, some of, you, some of them are calling you John the Baptist. Others are saying Elijah. And still others are calling you a prophet. I got to thinking about this Gospel text. And I got to thinking about it from the perspective of the camera lens in focus before triggering the shutter. I can remember when I first got into photography, the camera I had, I had to stand there very calmly, very quietly, very stilly, and I had to move the lens around until it was in proper focus so I could see clearly and then take a picture. So every photographer who's ever been in photography for a long time knows the importance of having the camera lens in focus before triggering the shutter. Nowadays, with our phones, that's not an issue anymore. But you have to go back and think about the way that it was years ago. Well, you can set the right shutter speed on those cameras. You can open up the lens to the proper settings. But if that lens is not in focus, the picture will be worthless. Anyone who's trying to sell something these days knows the importance of having an accurate focus on the market for which the product is intended. Whether you're trying to sell a soap product or a soft drink, it's necessary to know exactly what people will most likely purchase your product. On what age group or what sector of the public are you focusing all of your attention? So Jesus, here in our text, realized that if people were going to follow him, and if his followers were going to be truly effective Christians in the world, they needed to know exactly who he was. They also needed to know precisely what he was involved in being a Christian. That's probably one reason why he asked this simple question. But it's an all-important question in our Gospel text today. Tell me, he says, who do people say that I am? He was actually trying to see if the people were in focus, if they were in tune with him, if they understood what he was trying to say. But then a little bit later, he even gets more specific in his questioning. He says, what about you? Who do you say that I am? By raising these questions, Jesus is reminding you and me today that if we want to have an effective faith, one that uplifts and makes a difference in this world, then we will need to have our religion, our faith, our belief system in total focus. To do almost anything worthwhile in life, we need to have things in focus, things in order, things ready to go in the right direction. So let's talk about this right now. First, the whole purpose of the Bible, in my opinion, is to bring Jesus Christ into focus for you and for me. To bring our Savior there right there in clear focus of who he is and what he's about. This way we know exactly who we're worshiping, exactly who we're praising, exactly whose love we are taking in. In the reading for this morning, Peter gave her the perfectly focused answer to Christ. He said, you are the Messiah. That's an easy answer, isn't it? And that's the perfect one that Peter needed to say. But obviously, in its brevity, only one word? Really? Well, it needs to be explained. Messiah. If I would say Messiah now, and I would take a poll of the people around you, and you would take a poll of people around you now, what would they say that it is? Who is Messiah? What does Messiah mean? Throughout the ages, mankind has always needed and has always longed for an answer to life's meaning. People have looked with hope for someone who could fill a puzzle of life together, who could fill all the pieces in. One little thrill of any photographer is to look through the unfocused lens of the camera and gradually see a beautiful scene come into focus. I can imagine what Jesus was looking for was to see if the disciples had things in focus. And that's what he was after. The great thrill in reading the New Testament is to finally see the Messiah in focus. That's who Jesus is. God's love. God's saving purpose. God's plan and future for all people. Finally, that was all coming into focus in one divine person. And the face of the beautiful Savior 
Jesus Christ. In this way, Jesus Christ is the purpose of the entire Bible. And that's what Peter was saying when he answered, You are the Messiah. And what a blessed faith we have when each of us can give the same focused answer. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Christ brings our eternal salvation sharply into focus as he goes to that cross. And he rises on the third day. There he is forgiving me. He is accepting me. Christ pulls my life together. Christ pulls me back into focus through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Through his resurrection pulls me right back into focus in what I'm about and how I'm serving him and I'm helping other people. And now, because of that, I can live in daily confidence and hope. Secondly, you and I urgently need to have Christ in our religion in sharp focus. In a world that intends to be more out of focus than in focus, Jesus Christ is needed out in this world more than ever before, and it is when what we need right now to try to help us bring it back into focus. The stakes are very high if we don't do this. Jesus knew exactly who he was. Therefore, he was able to make a, the cross a time of victory and not a time of defeat. And Peter's fine answer, she, after Peter's answer, Jesus proceeds to fill the disciples about the economic catastrophic events that will lead to his great suffering and death. In verse 31, we read, The Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. He will be put to death, but three days later he will rise to life. He made this very clear to them. Yes, Jesus made this all very clear to the disciples because he himself was very clear about it. He knew exactly who he was. He clearly saw that, that divinely appointed son who was to die. Because Christ had a clear focus on his own person and mission, he overcame the odds, though the stakes were very high. Christ was effective because he had his own person and mission in focus. Do you know who you are? Are you in focus with Jesus? Do you have your mission in focus of what you're trying to clearly do and clearly see in the future? If you want to be an effective Christian, we need to make sure that our religion and our faith and our church make a difference in this world and in our own lives and in the, all around the other people around us. So we must make sure that we are in focus. We need to have Christ as a center of our mission, as a center of our faith. And these things bring us into focus. Oh, the stakes are very high. I know that. To carry the guilt of sins in this world is a heavy burden. It could be downright dangerous. Many today are weighed down with uh, frustration and disappointment about past failures. An uneasy depression nags above them most of the time. Unrevealed guilt over past sins is not too pleasant. Sometimes it can devastate us to the point where we're pretty well torn up inside. That's not good. That's when we are out of focus. For those are the, for us and for those around us, it is hard. But having Jesus Christ and his forgiveness in sharp focus, that can free us and that can give us a feeling of exhilaration and excitement about life again. Yes, in Jesus we can begin living again on a daily basis. Through our baptism we can receive forgiveness of sins every day. Every day when you talk to the Lord, ask for forgiveness, get back into focus. His cross can mean the end to the sin in your lives and bring you back into focus. In him we are convinced again that God, God does have the whole world in his hands. Even my little world, even my own little life, even as the new song that Pastor Lisa taught us a moment ago, the words that she did to fit into this whole day. And finally, as Jesus gets things, to get, gets things together for us so we can move out to make a difference in the lives of other people. Our faith, our religion, makes a difference in the world. With the solidness of faith and the self-certainty, we can afford to share our faith and the inner strength with other people who do not have this. The world needs strong people 
If you dwell in the word, if you dwell with Jesus Christ, strength will come to you. So if you don't feel very strong right now, read the Bible. Get to understand our Savior on a personal level. The world needs people of strength who have discovered faith. They need people of power who understand God's salvation amidst their own weakness. People all around us need people who have their faith in focus. I need to be around people who have their faith in focus and know who they are serving and what they are doing. I know you need it the same. Put yourself around people who help keep you in focus. People all around us tend to pull us away to get us out of focus. That's where the strength of God needs to come in and the victory of Christ's love and presence can help you stay in focus. People need people who know Christ. That's you. That's me. When I listen and I hear the word of God, I feel strength. I hope that you will start looking at it when the lessons are read from the lectern, that you will start feeling more in focus with God, more strength from God and what he's trying to say to you through the scriptures. Because the word of God can nourish us. The word of God can give us strength for our lives and keep us in focus. The whole key to is to remember Jesus Christ again. Claim the forgiveness of his cross. Bask in the certainty of his resurrection. Come, get back in focus and focus on him. Then go out, live your faith, serve the Lord, but stay in focus. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.